Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader Review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to give you a triple threat, or a triparison, of the Kobo Mini, the Kobo Glow, and the Kobo Touch. We're going to just basically show you the hardware, software, and some of the differences between all these devices. First of all, let's talk about the specs. The Kobo Mini has a 600 by 800 screen with e-ink visplex. It's running on an 800 megahertz processor. The Kobo Touch, on the other hand, is also running an 800 megahertz processor. Resolution is the same, 600 by 800. The big difference is the Mini has two gigs of internal storage, while this only has one. The Kobo Glow, on the other hand, is the same six inch display screen as this, but it's really different. It has 1024 by 758 and uses a new e-ink Pearl XGA display screen. It's also running on a one gigahertz processor, so it's the fastest and the most highest resolution uh, in the bunch here. On average, they all last you about one solid month on battery life, and they all have Wi-Fi, so you can purchase the books on each and every one of these devices here. Uh, Peter, fundamentally on a hardware level, what's really the big differences between the two or well, three? Well, we kept the... Uh Kobo Touch White here, so you can we can kind of differentiate between the uh, the two latest ones and the touch screen last generation. So we'll start with the Kobo Touch. Uh, you'll see that the well the logo's up top and it is in full color uh, with the blue and the red and the pink on the logo. We also have a home button, which I really miss on these two. I don't think there's any reason for them to get rid of the home button. Um, I mean, the Barnes & Noble Nook Simple Touch is touchscreen, and they still have a home button, but anyways. Uh, we have a micro USB on the bottom, micro SD card slot, expandable up to 32 gigs. The same kind of status, uh, the same kind of um, standby uh, and power slider and status indicator light as the other ones. Nothing on the right, as there's, as there's no physical page turns and a really tight argyle quilted backing. So you'll notice that it is a lot different than the quilted backing on the Kobo Glow because they're, well, they're far wider. And the Kobo Glow and the Mini are both detachable uh, backing so you can do uh, color changes on the back of the housing. Yeah, that's one of the major hardware features. Pretty well, these two are pretty similar to the Kobo Touch in terms of um, where the um, micro USB is and uh, where the, the, you know, the power buttons and stuff like that are. Uh, the big difference is the Mini does not have expandable storage. It does not have a micro uh, SD card, whereas these two do. So you can definitely uh, increase your memory. So if memory is a huge option, you might want to look at the Glow or the Touch uh, in order to facilitate more room on your device to it, be able to handle more media. Exactly. I do like how they offer expandable memory on this, just in case. I mean, everyone, uh, you might run out of uh, room when you have pictures and heavy PDFs and all that on there. One thing I'd like to note, um, something else, is that they have a lot of uh, FCC certification and all that kind of text on the bottom here, as well as they do on the Kobo Touch. But I think I really like how they cleaned up the Mini because there isn't any of that. Yeah, there's the not device. a lot of branding and stuff. Nothing. They put all that actually behind this backing. If you take this backing off, you have the hard reset button and all of these FCC certification numbers and certificates underneath here. Which I, offers, I think I like it better like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. They still have all the same certifications, but they offer a cleaner looking device, which I thought was a really good idea and a very good change. Okay, so the big hyping factor between uh, the Kobo Glow is the fact that the, the screen actually glows in the dark. Why don't we show them sort of how that's accomplished? You'll see that the two devices are very similar from the touch and the glow, except for the glow light button. That has changed because, well, the Kobo Touch doesn't have one. So let's turn this on and even in a very light room, it will be instantly evident that you are operating with a glow light. You will right. tell that the screen is instantly illuminated and this isn't a light shining on the screen or even a backlight. Yeah, w how this in essence works is the lights are actually emitting from the bottom of the screen here. There's four LED lights and I mean to the naked eye you can't really see it but what's happening is it's shooting upwards like this whereas tablets the light is coming from the back 
at you. So this is inherently a little bit more easier on the eyes. On camera, this really looks bluish, but to the naked eye, especially on on sort of any setting but the highest one, it, it, it looks white. So I just wanted to sort of point that out. So this is probably the most fully featured device. It really allows you to read in any circumstance, the resolution's higher, and it has a faster processor. So if all of those factors really mean a lot to you, be prepared to pay a little bit more of the premium price uh, that's found on the Glow. What we're going to look at now is more or less uh, some of the reading experience. Maybe turn a few pages, give you an indication on page turn speed from device to device. Looking at it straight up, there's a lot of similarities. The Touch has wish list instead of reading life, which are found on both of these devices, like on their main uh, home screen. They all have browsers to be able to surf uh, like the internet and if you purchase media from Kobo.com or from you know other various stores, they'll automatically be synced to your device. So there's a lot of uh, homogenization between the interface between all three of these. They, they pretty well all look the same. If you grew up using the touch, you'll be able to feel right at home with the glow or the mini exactly so let's go to bookshelf mode and try to load up our favorite uh, Christian Hanna book get the same one going on all of them here night road and night road so you can see that obviously this one is glowing so it offers the best uh, possible optimized um, optimized setting so we'll just turn that off first thing I notice is the resolution on this all the text looks super crisp compared to the others and if you notice the um, it's more of a heavier contrast on uh, this on this one it, it, the background isn't so dark like this one is so I think that's a major uh, upgrade from the touch to the glow yeah totally and you really I really notice text is popping having these all side by side you really see the difference in the higher resolution resolution display screen here now of course I think the font on the touch is probably a little bit uh, smaller but all these look about the same in terms of like the size of the fonts and stuff like that do you see that they do all offer the oh yeah let's get on some uh, amesis here they do all offer the exact same uh, customizable well settings um, you can see that you all get line spacing uh, margins a lot of the line spacing and margins don't work on all side loaded content but they will work on most so you can see you have uh, the same preview menu so you can go font size larger on all of them and it'll give you an idea of what it's going to look like when you press apply we don't want that too big though so we'll change all those now you notice the touch probably mm -hmm. is probably the last one out of these few to really implement those new changes it looks like the glow did it first followed by the mini and then the touch exactly we more or less hit it about at the same time what about page turn speeds i mean this this probably should give you a little bit of an indication on how things look so i want you peter to sort of at the same time to just turn the pages on both of those just to sort of see how things are ca are catching up it does seem like, and it's a lot easier for me to tell because I'm the one physically doing it and I know when, you know, I've kind of activated the swipe, it does seem like the glow is a little bit quicker. It's just more refined. Uh, I mean, they've had quite a bit of time between the touch and the Wi-Fi to the um, glow to, you know, further refine the page turning. There's less staining on the screen. You can tell here we're getting a little bit of what the previous pages said, whereas this, it's virtually clear. Yeah, you do notice that in that space here, you are seeing like, or even at that, the yeah, next page with, with like more sentences, you do see like some of the ghosting from yeah. like the prior images there. Whereas these, I, I've not noticed any ghosting no, at all exactly. on both the mini and the glow. You'll see that there is quite a, quite a bit. I mean, all of that mostly goes away when you do do a full wipe away. You'll see it's, it's virtually gone, but 
Um, the more use you put it through, the more ghosting you will get with the Kobo Touch. So it's not a huge problem and it doesn't really affect you that, it doesn't make or break the reading experience, but it is noticeable. Right, so primarily we wanted to show you the book experience because this is what most people are going to be reading. The PDF experience is pretty well the same from device to device. Now, there's no great surprises there, but all of these e-readers will allow you to take notes, highlights, uh, look up words on the dictionaries. What I really like like about uh, a lot of these is that you can use the dictionary on side loaded books and I noticed this more prevalently on the Glow and the Mini. All right, let, let's talk about your thoughts because really in this triparison, I don't want to spend a lot of time showing PDFs and showing the internet experience and, and, and this to this. It's pretty well the fundamental differences between all three devices. Well, I will say first off, I just got an award here on the kit on the Kobo Touch which is Word Up and under Reading Life you can view those awards so um, like uh, I said in previous comparisons and reviews the Kobo has Reading Life which actually allows you to track your progress and give you a little bit more encouragement when it comes to uh, reading so I think that was a uh, that's a good addition uh, overall um, I, I mean better it's hard to say because they're all so different but Obviously, pretty much everything you can find in a kit, in a Kobo Touch, you can find in the Glow. So I would say definitely, um, if I was looking for a six-inch reader, I would go with the Glow over the Touch. It just it glows. I mean, it's more refined, high resolution, faster processing. Um, it's just so much better, which is good. And uh, if you're looking for something a little bit more portable, you can tell how much smaller this is. So it's almost the size of the screen itself of the of the Kobo. Uh, six inch so it's much smaller you can see there so if you're looking for a five inch I would go or even uh, smaller than a six not specifically a five I would go with the uh, Kobo mini but um, as for uh, trying to pick a winner I mean I wouldn't really say any of them is really better than the other because they have ups and downs this is cheaper you don't get a glow light but it is more price efficient this is smaller you don't get a glow light you don't get an SD card so there's much there's so much that goes into finding out which one's better I would say I like them all yeah I mean the Kobo mini I think would make a good stocking stuffer oh, yes it would make a good backup reader it would make like giving a gift to your mom for Christmas not knowing else what to get her this would be good I mean you know literally you can buy anywhere between 70 and a hundred dollars there's a lot of value there I would probably say what packs the most punch and what gives you the most value for your money is probably the Kobo glow reads in the dark expandable storage uh, it's fast you, you noticed even in the page turn uh, tests which is not indicative to a lot in some people's opinions, but churning the pages in in a very simple task really tells you a lot about it everything. Does. It would be applicable to the web experience and opening menus and in overall navigation. Um, so I would probably recommend the Glow over anything. I do miss the physical home button, but as you could see that the, the profiles have been slimmed down. It's hard to see on camera, but because of the home button, it's really kind of made the touch bigger. Exactly. You lose uh, all this extra meat on the bottom of the reader because you don't need it anymore for the home screen functionality, uh, the home button functionality. So they have slimmed it down and it's actually thinner than the Kobo Touch as well. Yeah. So overall, we'll leave it up to you guys to make the final judgment call on what device that you like the most. Please comment on this video on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash goodereader. And for all the latest news, interviews, reviews, and everything else, check out goodereader.com as your number one source for everything to do with what we're showing you today. So for Goody Reader and a tri comparison of the Kobo Mini, the Kobo Glow and the Kobo Touch. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.